So since it's not infinitely old, that means that the thing that brought it into, into existence, if it was infinitely old, would have brought the universe into existence an infinite long time ago. But since the universe is not infinitely old, then the thing that existed before the universe is not infinitely old. It can't be. But if it, what we said it was, because it would have to be. But it can't be. It doesn't work. In other words, the impersonal cause of the universe is impossible. It can't be the cause. It cannot be. Because if it existed eternally, it would have brought the universe into existence automatically, eternally a long time ago. But that's not the case. Since it's not the case, then the impersonal cause of the universe has been shown not to be true. Mm -hmm. And since the destructive syllogism is true, and the impersonal cause is now negated, therefore there's a personal cause of the universe, God exists. It's the only logical explanation. And that's your exertion? Yeah, it's logically necessary. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go down the problems. There's, I've counted 16, but I can only write down so quick. Really? So, I, well, basically, we're assuming that the thing that caused the universe to come into existence, again, we're, ex we're talking about the Big Bang, which was a rapid expansion of the universe of space and time. Now, the thing is that we are assuming that this thing had to, quote, had to, bring the universe into existence instantaneously, that there wasn't a wait time. And also, we're assuming that there was even a thing to begin with. Okay. You, the, the, you don't understand the argument. Well, when I gave you the time, I would appreciate the same respect. But you don't understand the argument. Well, just a thought. Just a thought. You can tell me how I don't explain the argument in a moment. So you when know. it comes to the Big Bang, if we have the Big Bang and we have a start time to the Big Bang. That's as far back as we can study into the past. Any assertion, which you have made assertions, about the thing behind it is an argument from ignorance because no one knows what happens back there or if there even was a before. If there was no before, then how can we say logically you know, and frame it in the sense of before? We can't. So if we're going to assert anything the argument would be negated by that point alone. And it doesn't matter what the argument actually is because if we place the argument in a time frame that's actually before anything that we can study, we don't even know if the laws of physics or even the laws of logic that govern this universe happened before then. What may make sense here may not make sense back there if there even was a back there. So in reality, we are actually jumping the gun quite a bit right there. So we still have that fork in the road, and we're still stuck at it. Um, you don't understand the argument, and I would Was recommend. Was your argument that. placed before the Big Bang? Yes or no? Okay. Do you know what logical priority is versus temporal priority? They're I different. would appreciate it if you answer my question. I'm trying to answer the question by seeing what you know. No, you you're answering the question with a question. I would like a, just a straight answer from you. Ask the, Ask the question again. Tell me now. Ask the question again. All right. Was your argument placed before the Big Bang? Logically before or temporally before? Just before. You you don't understand. <laughs> so, Do you know what logical priority is versus temporal priority? Do you know what the term before means? Yes, I do understand and what, what, what then it what means is your answer before. To the question? You don't understand the question I'm asking. You don't understand the you're issue. Trying to, you're trying to ask a question or answer a question with a question, and that's incredibly dishonest. What no, I'm no, he's is, not dishonest. I'm trying to help you. He, no, no, I'm talking about you, not he. Red line, red line. Listen, t take a break, okay? You, you, Let me explain. You need to stop trying to win a debate. Okay, really. This isn't about win winning. This is about you are getting, because you're not understanding the questions being asked of you. When 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 Matt's saying that you're you know you're asking a question, what does before mean? You you sound almost like Bill Clinton. Well, it depends on what the definition of is is, yeah. because the the Let reality is is that here you have something that he's giving you the two different ways that before is used. You're not understanding those two different ways. You're, 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 the argument is placed at a time frame. 
and I'm thinking even he will agree with this. If the argument is placed in a time frame, and the argument is placed in a time frame that is, quote, before the bang, before 3.8 and some odd billion years ago, then at that point he is arguing within a realm in which we cannot study any further back into the past. If we cannot study any further Red. back into the past, then any assertion made is an argument from ignorance. Red, well, you're the one who brought up the issues. That, that, that require me to ask the question of logical priority versus temporal priority because you're the one who said we don't even know if the laws of logic govern the universe before our universe. You're if the one even who said, was before. I also asked, added that caveat me, in there. Okay, let me, let me finish. You're the one who said that uh, you brought up the idea of no one knows what happens before the universe. You're bringing up the issue of temporal priority in the relationship of physics to a kind of a universe that might have existed before our universe. And you brought up the issue of the laws of logic may not govern or, or work in the same sense. So now you're the one who's brought up the issue of temporal priority or logical priority. Then when you said before, you didn't clarify. All right, well, how about this? It would be both, because when it comes to the the issue of... Wow, not something. Someone muted me. No, we don't... I'm sorry. We don't We don't want to mute people. That's not right. Um, here, let me make an announcement to everybody here. For some reason in my clicking, somehow I left the Hangout, and there was already 10 people in here, so when I wanted to get back in... I jumped back in as quickly as I could, and when I did, I joined on a different Google account. And after you, a certain can you amount, go out and come back in. No, after a certain amount of time, of the person who started the hangout not being in here, the the hangout went offline. However, oh, I am no. Redline. I am recording it on Mixler. What I'm going to do is I'm going to upload the rest of it from the point where it cut off. I'm going to upload it. It's just going to be audio only, but I'm going to upload it, okay? And, okay. and people will see that there's no seam at all, okay? So so, so, there, so this, there's not going to be any gaps or any misses, correct? Correct. I'll actually I'll overlap it a little bit so that everybody knows that there was no, okay. no break right. at all. Redline, I appreciate you being here, and I appreciate your tone. And and your patience and your you're trying to understand. I appreciate it. Both sides. No, no, no. The, you you have technical patient. difficulties. I understand, and it's, yeah. it, it happens to people. It happens. Yep. Um, I won't ask my question because you guys are engaging well. Okay, so I'll no, I'll be quiet. Okay. And yeah, and pe there are th they, right for, now. Thanks for warning us, though. Uh, right now, Redline, there are 34 people on Mixler listening. Okay. In addition to the people that are. I would I would also post on G plus to say hey just so guys so, just so you guys know it's uh it's here yep. link link posted down below I'll go do that good idea yeah that that way people can people aren't assuming wrongly of you because I know that can happen <laughs> no really yeah really I think uh, I think Matt I, maybe out. I just I just I just uh, have the worst opinion of humanity. I, I, I don't know. I might just be a terrible individual. Who knows? Hey, I'm glad you lost your bet. I'm glad you're here. It's a great conversation. Uh, I, I don't. That Hellcat was fast though. Holy crap! Okay, Matt. Okay, Matt Slick. You're, I, you're I, back I still home. I still maintain my uh, my assert my uh, my my car though. My car's still still better than his. All right, let's get back into it. All right. <clears throat> so, you can set up a, a car race with you and Matt Slick. What kind of car does he drive? Four banger. Oh, bring it on, man. Bring it on. I'll, I'll fill up the nitrous bottles. Anyway, so I, I, I guess before the whole technical difficulties issue came up, I was talking about the concept of before the Big Bang and how any argument placed at a before the Big Bang when we don't even know if there even was a before, you know, that kind of invalidates whatever argument is trying to be placed in that. So I'm basically asking for clarification. Is the argument or whatever argument that has been stated as, you know, a supposed uh, proof for the personal God, you know, creation hypothesis. I'm asking, was that argument placed before the Big Bang, before 3.8 and some odd billion years ago, when that first initial spark that we can uh, that we can study happened? 
you ready for me to to uh, teach you what these concepts are? I'm just waiting for you to answer the question. That's all I want is a yes or no. Don't remember the question. I got. Uh, I got. Okay. I got. Wait, 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 wait. Answer. Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. I let me ask my question. Redline, how do you determine? Well, I can at, answer this question. Redline, how do you determine at what point um, we can't discuss because it's too far back? It would. It would be right. Right at that first initial dwindle of the universe. Basically, yes. when you look at uh, big uh, Big Bang cosmology. There's a certain point at which we can't study any further back into the past because we're currently stuck in this universe. We're, we're stuck. You know, just like we can't take pictures of our own galaxy because we're stuck in the disk. We can, we can take pictures of our, of our galaxy from within the disk, but, you know, doing like an overhead helicopter shot like you would in a neighborhood, we can't do that. We're stuck here. So at the, so at the point of the Big Bang, we can see a picture of that, but we can't see a picture of one second before the Big Bang? Yeah, basically before the Big Bang is kind of the no man's land where we have no idea if anything even existed before that. We have no idea what laws of physics, if any, apply there. We don't know if the laws of logic or anything like that applied there. We don't even know if they're, you know, we know nothing about it, including whether or not whatever realm it existed in actually existed. You know, it's a very weird concept, but any argument that's that's placed in that type of realm, and I'll just call it a realm for the sake of argument, which may or may not exist, that it is an argument from ignorance at that point. And if that is where the argument is being placed, if that is if that is where the argument is being placed, then the argument by by a by a result of that turns into an argument from ignorance. And if that's the case, I'm not interested. Um, you know, you're the one, hold on a sec. Yeah. You're the one appealing to ignorance in order to refute something that doesn't require that. No. You're the one saying you're the one saying we don't know what the laws of physics were before then. We do not know what the laws of logic apply then. You're the one apply, appealing to what we don't know. I'm appealing to what we do know. So why don't we get back on board and continue to move? And what did I say that about what we do not know? What we do know is that we have a limit to our to our ability to study. We can only study study so I far back into the past. I understand that. Are so you, let me are, teach you the difference between a logical priority and a temporal priority. With and logic within what universe, ours or whatever may be outside of it, and which may have totally different properties, different laws of logic entirely. Uh, so, do you believe in magic? I don't believe in magic. No. So you don't believe in things that can't be substantiated? Uh, I don't believe in things that can't be substantiated. So you appeal to what you can't substantiate as possible universes that might exist maybe as a refutation for this? No, what I'm saying is that your argument is an argument from Listen ignorance. to what I'm saying. No, you're arguing from ignorance. You're no, talking about possible not, universes that don't exist, that you don't know, that maybe this, maybe that. Really, do you have any evidence for that? You're, you're, say, you're saying that wait, wait, it's wait, not wait, an wait, argument wait, from wait, ignorance. You're not listening. You continually misrepresent and oh, don't, and you continually fail to understand the argument, and then you say I'm the one arguing out of ignorance when you're the one arguing out of ignorance. Yeah, this I'm trying is to work with you logically, step by step. I've asked you several times. Let me show you the difference between logical priority and temporal priority. Why do you think I want to do that? Because it's necessary. Because we can only work with what we know. We don't work with what we don't know. You don't try and refute an argument by saying there might be another universe out there that's different. So therefore, Matt, your argument doesn't work. That is not logical. How, to say there might be, Mr. I'd call you start also start calling you Mr. Magic Man. If that's how you want to argue, you believe in magic. You believe in things that you can't account for. You believe that they, that might or might not be. No predictability, no regularity. Matt, let, let me let me point. Let me actually break this down in simple terms. And you're you're basically pointing. You're basically phrasing this out. Well, we got to bring up the crayons for for red line. Okay, well, two can play at that game if that's the way we're actually going to play. Matt, I got two doors behind me. Both of them are closets. There's either a pink elephant in it, or there is not a pink elephant in one of those doors. Now, in a door. In a door. Okay. In a door. How do you have a pink elephant in a door? Yeah. So let's let's try let's try this. If, sure, if how we're, do you have a pink elephant in a door, I would say it's not the case that there's a pink elephant inside of a door. Inside of a door? Okay, fine. 
trying to phrase this in a, in a way that's easy to understand, but apparently... Okay, so, so phrase it this way. If I think what you're trying to say is <clears throat> there either is a pink elephant behind a door in a closet or there is not a pink elephant behind, in a, door behind a, a door in a closet. Behind a door. I'm sorry. I agree I'm... with that. All right. You, you, you agree with that. So if the argument was placed there, that's where your argument stems from. You know, if we're going to break it down to its simplest point, that's the, that's the point where we're arguing. All right. Correct. Correct. Yes or no. Um, it's not an argument to say that there is or is not. It's just a statement. Okay. Uh, an argument is based on a series of statements that have logical connections and and therefore necessity. But to say there is is something or is not something is not an argument. It's just simply a statement. So when you say it's an argument, you just you're not getting it. It's not, you're, it's not correct. So this entire time you weren't making arguments, you were making statements? No. Okay. Um, so let me ask you this. Were okay. your statements... Were hold, your on statements. hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Uh, I'm, I'm being very patient with you. Um, I've asked you if you agree or disagree with various things. And what you've done is confuse the issue with ignorance, uh, with your ignorance. Right. And I've tried to offer explanations to clarify things, and you resist at every turn. Now, for about... 10, 15 minutes now, I've been saying, let me explain logical priority versus temporal priority. Uh, so we can get to the issue of the word before, which is what you raised. And, mm -hmm. and, and were your arguments placed in the before the Big Bang, if there even was a before the Big Bang? We would have to discuss what it means before, before we can answer the question. You really don't know what the word before means? Wow. I seriously think you're playing dumb here. No, you don't understand what he's tried to explain several it's times. It's a very simple question. Okay, it's a very logically? simple question. Yeah, it's a very simple question. Basically, no, it's not a simple question. Is so, so Red, you're just demonstrating your own ignorance. Red, you're demonstrating your own ignorance. I'm trying to be nice, trying to be polite, but you're demonstrating that you don't know what it is you're asking. In the then, context of this discussion, it requires a little bit of training, a little bit of knowledge, not a whole bunch. I can I can tell you, we already would have gotten beyond this, and we'd be answering other objections. But what you're doing is demonstrating you don't know the tools. You don't have the tools necessary at this point to be able to argue this cogently. Yet you can't answer that one question. Okay, so do you think I can answer the question? question. Time. You don't understand the question that you're asking. No, I'm asking. You don't understand. I, okay, let me ask you. In what sense or do you mean before? Temporally before or the initial spark you mean logically or temporally? Some odd billion years ago when we can where we're at the barrier of the point where we can study no further back into the past. Matt, may, maybe maybe the thing you to mean, do is to answer for him both logically and temporally so that maybe he could then understand that the differences between I'm gonna the ask two. him I'm gonna ask him he doesn't know what's going on. Um, do you mean temporally before or do you mean logically before? Okay, let's 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 go into the difference because I guarantee they're going to place it at the same point in time that I'm talking about. Tell me the difference. If it's the same point of time, how do you know it's not logical or temporal? We don't. That's the point. Any any assertion put before do you know what the difference the is? Bang, any Between. assertion put before the Big Bang is an argument from. Do ignorance. you know what the difference is between logical priority and temporal priority? Are both of them placed before the Big Bang in your argument? Oh, wow. okay. You know, uh, this way, it may be I could I'm, request. I'm trying to get an answer from, from you. I've been patient, but if I'm not going to get an No, you've not been patient. I've been patient. Matt, just, uh, just answer this one question. Just, just answer red this line, one question. Red line. And, and it's I'll like eat this. my shoe this if you answer what this you're doing. This is what you're doing. Answer this question. How many pounds does eight gallons of water weigh? So, if I kept telling you to answer that question, or can you answer that question? Yeah, or, I just, I, I just, I just did. Now, why can't he? Be no, okay, okay, well, guys, 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 look. Red, stop for a second. Let me explain something, okay? Because in all seriousness, Red, you don't know what you're doing here. You, you, you don't have the I tools. I could say the same thing from, from you. It's a great assertion, Matt, and I'll, I'll give you a ribbon you. for it. The I'll idea, it. though, is I'm trying to get an answer to a simple question that you have ducked, it's... dodged, facade, and done whatever okay. you can do to avoid it. I'm trying to work Matt, with you. Let me, let me try here. If you're going to work with me, then work with me here. All right, so let me just get this out. All right, 
Hey, hold, on hold on a second. Hold on a second. Brandon, gonna, any way. Hold on. Stop. 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 Matt, can I just stop. get one thing out, please? Stop. Stop. Okay. You got to mute him. I got to say something. Oh, for okay. sake. Okay. Now look. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to teach you. But you resist at every single turn. Your ignorance at this point is very important. You do not understand what it is you're criticizing. And you keep coming back to the same question. And I keep asking, what do you mean by before? Because there's a temporal form, there's a logical form. You apparently don't know the difference. It's important to be able to ask the difference. You should at this point say, well, what do you mean by the, those? Could you explain those? That's all you've got to do. I'll explain what they are. Then you'll see what the argument rests on. But you don't want to do that. You want to say, it's a simple question, Matt. No, it's not a simple question. You don't know what you're doing. I'm trying to not be mean. I'm just trying to tell you. You don't know what you're doing. You're in over your head. Are you done yet? No, I'm not done. I'm going to explain the difference between logical priority and temporal priority. What I'm hearing from you, Matt, is that you are refusing to answer the question. And if you just came out and said I'm that, I would have... I'm not refusing to answer the question. No, you have been. Okay, I'll I'm ask trying you to understand your question better. I, I'm, I'm going, I'm going You're to... You're refusing. Answer. You are refusing to clarify your question. Dude, I'm, I'm, ref I'm referring it to both points simultaneously. So if you make an argument, what are whether the, it be for the what, logic, explain, let's see if you understand them. Explain whether it be for the, the logical, between logical the priority temporal, and temporal. Whether it be for the logical or the temporal, if any argument you're trying to make for either one of those is placed before the Big Bang, is it or is it not an argument from ignorance, yes or no? No. Now, it's not an argument you, from ignorance? Can you explain the difference between logical wow. priority versus wow. temporal priority? Okay, so Wow. It's not an argument for me, but wow. Okay. Wow. You know the difference between logical priority versus temporal priority. Wow. Do you know them? And if you do, Matt, please I explain just, the difference. If you Red, don't... Stop dodging. Hang on, Matt. Don't, let, let, me ask, let me just make sure I understand you. You said it's not an argument from ignorance to assert something in a realm that we don't even know exists? You do not understand the issue. And you're refusing to answer the question again. Okay. I'm done. Okay. See you no, guys later. If you want to run, line, go ahead line. and run. Because I'll, I'll explain line. this. Oh. So he left. He's okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, let me wait. explain. No, no, folks, no, no. Folks, Matt, folks, Matt, so Matt, Matt, Matt. Let me Matt. explain. Let me, as the host here, I, I can't believe he left. Because I was just about to say, and you were hinting to, you were hinting to, you don't know the difference between logical and temporal. I was just about to break in and say, Matt, I don't know the difference. Explain it to me and explain it to Redline because I don't think Redline knows either. He doesn't know. He didn't want to admit that he didn't know. No. Be and, and you know what? Because he was steadfast in his argument, he didn't think that the difference mattered. It does matter. It, well, I was trying to explain it to him. You know, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain it here for the viewers, for the listeners. Uh, and you know, One, it, one and of the things, though, with, with him, though, Tim, is he came in looking to win a debate. And you saw that because Matt took this into a total different area, just in a general discussion. And, and what he was doing was just he wanted to get to this one thing where he th thought he could win a debate. And he actually lost the debate in his argument to Matt because he's telling us what we can and can't know about the beginning of the universe when he ignores the only observable evidence for the beginning of the universe. He ignores that and it tells us what we can and can't know. We can know what happened at the beginning of the universe because someone observed it and told us. And and that was the thing, you know, if, if Redline ends up listening, that, he, he gives up his whole argument because he admits that well, we, physics could be different at different times. Well, how do you know it wasn't different before the Ice Age? How do you know it was or was not different? He doesn't yeah. know anything. He's just assuming. He is the one who He's was arguing from, from ignorance. I want I want Red Redline's going to listen to this. Redline, people in the chat are saying, you know, duck, dodge, and run. Uh, he didn't want to know the, the 
he didn't want to understand the terms because it would disprove it true disprove your point redline it was not time to leave i mean there there's no danger here we're not like i, I don't understand why he left well i do because because he knew he was going to lose a debate and that's what he was looking to do and 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 that's not what matt was looking to do matt was not debating matt was trying to teach someone something that he didn't understand okay matt explain the difference logical right. and temporal logical priority versus temporal priority there's a difference and they both have to do with the issue of what comes before something as logically before versus temporally before so an, uh, an issue of temporal priority is this I'm going to exaggerate this analogy to make the point we flip on a light switch electricity takes five seconds to go from the lights through the light switch up to the wall the ceiling down into the light bulb and then it, it energizes the light bulb and then we five seconds later we have we have light now that's an exaggeration that's not how it works but this is for the the issue of explaining what temporal priority is temporal priority deals with with the order of events with duration of time between the cause and the effect so to speak it has to do with temporality so we, we measure time by events you know this happens um, I throw a ball against the wall it takes a second to get to the wall it bounces back the bounce is the effect of hitting the wall which the, the you know the energy in the wall you know the cause there's a temporality now let me take the the other position here logical priority so in logical priority in the illustration of uh, the light bulb when we, when we flip the switch on electricity is instantaneously there and the light is also instantaneously there now technically that's not the case technically we know it takes you know super fractions of a millisecond but this is an analogy to illustrate something of what logical priority is with something that we understand when you flip the light switch on light is there why is light there because electricity is there so we would say that electricity is logically prior to the light that it is necessary to be there in order for the light to be there it's not the case that the light must be there in order for the electricity to be there so the logical priority is the electricity is the cause of the the light it's not the case that the light is the cause of the electricity but whenever one is present electricity light is also automatically simultaneously present so in this illustration where instantaneous effect occurs, this is just an illustration, it's an analogy. Whenever we have something like electricity, the automatic necessary result is light. So it is the light is logically it logically follows the presence of the electricity. It follows it logically, not temporally. We would say the electricity is the logical priority. We would say that um, it was not the temporal priority, but a logical priority. Is is this clear? Anyone? I'm trying. I'm trying to track with you. <laughs> okay, let me try it again quickly. When you flip the light switch on, the electricity is there, and because electricity is there, the light is there. It's not the case that when the light is there, it's there because or. It, light is there because electricity is there it's not the case that electricity is there because the light is there electricity is the cause of the light light is not the cause of electricity therefore the electricity is logically prior gotcha okay a temporal priority would be me turning on the stove and then it heats up the pan gets heated up the egg cooks that's temporal priority there's a duration of time in between the events the cause and the effect with logical priority, there is no temporality. Okay? With logical priority, it just is whenever one is there, the other is there. Whenever electricity is there, the light is also there. But electricity is the cause of the light, light's not the cause of the electricity. It's called temporal priority. Logical necessity. That's all it is. Okay. Now oh, go, go ahead. When we're talking about the cause of the universe, he says what comes before? Does he mean temporally before? Is he saying, and here's the thing, this is an issue of logic, we have logical priority or we have temporal priority. 
temporal priority would mean that there was a duration of time before the universe existed where there was a cause that had a, an effect, let's just say five seconds later. But if that's the case, then that would mean that whatever existed before the universe had to have a, inside of it a causal effect, a, a cause, let's just say, that acted and then there was a result temporally. Now, if that's what he means, then we could discuss that. But if he means t logically priority, that whenever the cause of the universe, that pre-existing thing of the universe exists, like electricity, then the necessary cause of the universe is its existence automatically. Then we have a logical priority issue. But even in a logical priority issue, the thing that exists has to exist in some form of time because it has to have a cause, it produces an, um, a cause. So either way he were to look at it, it does not negate the argument. But because the way he argues, he jumps all around, I had to say, which one are you going to focus on? Which one do you want to get to? And let's discuss the aspects of each one, because I can do that. But he wouldn't specify. And because he would not specify, he was not able to clarify. And therefore, he would just go back to, what, you don't know what before means? Obviously, he doesn't know what before means in the argument. Okay, we've got uh, Chad, or Chaz, in the Hangout with us, and he says that you are misunderstanding the point Redline was trying to make. And in light of uh, Redline not being here, which is rather unfortunate, Chad, Chaz, I'm going to ask you to uh, weigh in here. <clears throat> Right. The, as I understand it, the argument started out from talking about uh, a creator or a, or a non-creator cause to the universe. Am I right? There was a personal creator of the universe, or there was not a personal creator of the universe? I believe that was the argument that was being had at one stage. Yes, and that whatever created the universe had to have the necessary and sufficient conditions. Did you hear about that? Yeah. Okay. So whatever existed prior to the universe, because it would cause the universe. Correct, yeah. It had to exist before the universe. He said, well, you don't know what it means to be before. We have two options we can discuss, temporal priority versus logical priority in the sense of what's before. At this point, he failed to be able to follow through on the discussion. Well, uh, um, you see, when it comes to talking about the Big Bang, everything prior to the Big Bang, we can't know in science because at the moment of the Big Bang, certain um, structures to how things work in the universe, laws of physics, came into being then. Those laws of physics may not have been around prior to that in the state that the universe was in. Like, think about it this way. You have ice cube and you have water, yeah? Now, it starts off an ice cube and it becomes water. Yeah. All right. I, I muted Chaz because I, I want to address what he just said, all right? He is saying that we cannot discuss... We cannot hypothesize. I'm saying we can't discuss. We can we cannot hypothesize about what happened before. Is that that's your position, right? No, it's saying that there is no um, observation you can make in the uh, universe. You don't have to that make will observation. indicate anything. Uh, the argument does not need any observations. It does not need anything. The argument's independent of that. Well, no. When trying to understand what happened from a scientific point at the beginning of the universe, we can observe certain things. We're not talking about observation of the beginning of the universe. We know well, the universe had a cause. Here's the thing. You need a, uh, a bit of evidence because then anybody can go around saying, I know because I know without any sort of external Chaz. validation to what they're Chaz. claiming. Yes, maybe you don't understand the argument, and it does not necessitate that we know what happened before the universe. 
because you see whatever brought the universe into existence would you agree whatever brought the universe into existence had to have the ability to bring the universe into existence correct okay no problem whatever brought so the universe doesn't define, uh, that doesn't define a single thing as the cause that I just says there has to have been a cause Chaz, Chaz, Chaz. all you have to do is listen to point by point see whatever caused the universe had to be able to cause the universe. That's all no, it is. I'm granting you that. But you what I'm could. saying is Can that's just a very broad thing. So, of course, it's going to be correct. So we have to move on. What's your next bit? Whatever caused the universe had to have the necessary and sufficient conditions to do it. Right? Correct. Okay. So if it, ha if it was not personal... The cause was not alive and thinking and can make decisions, just exists, just is what it is. It would have to have had those qualities, the necessary sufficient conditions, by nature of what it is. Is that Correct. not logically true? Okay. Yeah. If what existed in the universe existed eternally. Now, we can talk about eternal, not eternal, but just for this part of the argument, because I can answer the objections to that. But if it existed eternally, then... And if you want to say, and this is where people might say, but we don't know what eternally meant in that time frame. Well, then don't argue about it if you don't know. They'll say, but you don't know. I, I can only argue from what we do know. Are you going to argue from what we don't know? Are you going to say we don't know what it is, so therefore? Well, not really, because I mean, what we have is um, science looks at things from many different models and many different methods. Right now, you have things like theoretical physics, which use uh, mathematics because we notice things behave mathematically in the universe. They behave to some sort of logic that can be expressed. And we're using logic now. The thing yeah. that brought the universe into existence had to have the necessary sufficient conditions. Which we can both agree on. Yes, and it was at the very least logically prior. If you want to say there was no essence of time, then, well, then we can't say it was having existence in any sequential form because you're saying there is no such thing as time by causation. Uh, Matt, what I'm more saying is it's life, Jim, but not as we know it. Um, that the, uh, what, it, what currently exists existed in a different state, yeah? And in that different state, there was different rules, which is what I was saying with my um, ice cube analogy. Now, what we live in is water. The ice cubes melted. And we can figure out all sorts of things that are true about the water, yeah? How it behaves against certain other gravities and all that sort of thing. <clears throat> what its construct is, its properties. But those properties... Um, differ from the properties of ice and that's the problem between um, the universe that it, uh, came into existence from the Big Bang and from whatever existed prior to it. So we're not saying you can't discuss and we can say there are, there are a few logical conclusions we can draw that whatever preceded it had the necessary properties by which that uh, effect to come from that cause. We can both agree to that. Did the cause exist forever or not exist forever? We can't know that. I mean, there are only lots two of options. theories. There's only two options. There are lots of theories. For instance, <clears throat> one of the theories is that there are two universes uh, moving in opposition to each other one is going forward through time uh, and the other is moving backwards through time. Now the people going backwards in time still experience everything the same as we do, just in reverse. They're unaware that they're going backwards. Do you believe that, Chaz? What do you mean, do I believe it? Do you believe what you just... Do you, do you believe that that's the case? I or, think it's a very interesting um, theory. It may be interesting, but is that your position? Not my personal position, no. Right. I, can, I can entertain a lot of theories while right. we still uh, learn more and more about how things like time functions. Yeah. 
well, let's let's engage about what you believe, rather than bringing in those other things, because we can debunk those. And what what good is that? It's not your position. How how would you debunk those though? Well, do you believe it? Is that your position? I hold it as possible. Are you are you could say I'm somewhat agnostic on it. I don't hold any particular position pro or con it. I think it's a very interesting theory. I believe it would explain some things, but there's still tons of <clears throat> knowledge we have yet to learn about our universe. We are in we are an infant species um, that still has a lot to learn and um, we can make uh, hypotheses uh, we can look at mathematical proofs uh, to make theories which explain how this could have done but they don't go well look the maths all adds up in theoretical physics so it must be true what they then do is they have other people who look for evidence which would corroborate that mathematical proof. What which Chaz, is the reason why we do things like the thing at CERN? Chaz, Chaz, what do you know to be true? What do I know to be true? Yes. That there is a reality. Um, how do you know we, that? How do you know that? How do I know there is a reality? Can you perceive it? I am perceiving something. Is it reality? Well, it depends. What is your question here? Because people, when people ask this, they're looking at um, more than one thing. Well, so are you trying you, to go down the sort of solipsism? What do you know to be uh, true? Angle of things. What do you know or to be are you true? Trying to. What do you know to be true? What do I know to be true? Mm -hmm. uh, I think, therefore, I am. I exist. I therefore must exist in something. That something is what we classify as reality. Okay. Now, I'll give I, I'll give uh, I'll give you that up for the sake of argument. What What else do you know? What else do I know? That I am part of that reality. What reality? That I am observing. What reality? Existence. You exist. Do you not? How do you know I exist? Well, and I can't know personally if you exist. You could be a figment of my imagination. We can go down the solipsism route and then okay. go, therefore, right. uh, our senses, they can be fooled. But you don't therefore, know. But you don't. We can't always be sure of what we're observing. So this is why we have. But you don't know. Um, but you don't. Like, no, hold on. I'm trying to make a point. All right, here, go ahead. Therefore. Okay. The thing is, we can go down the solipsism route and then say, we can't know anything. For instance, we can hallucinate, uh, our, 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 our eyes can be wrong, we can miss here things, we can um, think we've seen something that's not there, we can not see something that is there, um, so therefore we couldn't trust any interpretation we had of reality from our senses. Chaz, would you or, like... Would you what like... we can then say above right. that is we can make um, a measurement um, by which we can then quantify the world around us and if it's testable and repeatable, Chaz, <coughs> Chaz, let's cut. Gets rid of that level of doubt. Would you like to give? Would you like me to give you proof that God exists? Go ahead. How could I possibly do that when I cannot prove to you that I even exist? How would you prove to me that you exist? How 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 do you know that I'm a real being? Because the creator of all things created mankind with a mind that he could reveal certain things with absolute certainty. That is, we as humans can know certain things to be true without okay, a doubt. If I put you in a virtual reality environment... Chaz, yeah, Chaz. and pre-program that environment and that knowledge into you, yeah, would it make that true? How Ch would you know the difference between what you think you're experiencing being real 
and what you are experiencing actually being real. You fall into the same trap. You can't right. validate right, your own Jazz. self externally right, to Jazz. yourself. Right, Chaz. You can, you can play the ultimate skeptic and claim that we can't know anything at all. Or you could forget the foolishness and realize that there are I'm, some I'm things. I'm not doing the foolish. You're the one that started us down Chaz, this like solipsism Chaz, trial. Are, Chaz, are you a male or a female? I'm a male. Do you know that to be true? Yes, because what we classify... Ah, you just uh, refuted yourself. Male, what we used to define, the measurement. You just refuted yourself, Chaz. You know that, to be, you know that to be 100% ultimately true. You're a male. Yes. Ah, thank you. <laughs> you just refuted yourself. Uh, I haven't refuted myself. Absolutely. I said about you. You, you know, you, you can you know reality. About, Chaz, no, Chaz. The question you were asking about reality, yeah? Chaz, I, I muted you, Chaz. You can know. You, That's because you, you don't want me to call you, you out on Chaz, your intellectual dishonesty here. Ch let I me, mean, Chaz, I, now I turned your volume down. It doesn't matter if you unmute yourself or not. Chaz, I just demonstrated to you. You said we cannot know anything. We can't know anything. Yet you're going to sit here and say that you know with absolute certainty to be true that you're a man that is a contradiction that i called you out and you you have to you have to now retreat and say yes you chaz can know ultimate reality can you not i think you'll find it's not a contradiction you are miss uh quoting what i said you're trying to make it different than what's actually been said, and you're trying to say I've thrown up a contradiction that I haven't. You were the one that's saying, "How can I know reality? How could I know you exist? That you exist?" And I said, "Well, if we're going to go down the solipsism route, yeah, we could say we couldn't know anything to be true." And I tried to ask you, "How would you know the difference between a virtual reality environment?" Do you want to jump in? Do you, do you want to jump into? I explained what the whole idea of solipsism is. Okay, Chaz. And I said, this is the reason why we can have a measurement outside ourselves. And if that measurement is testable, repeatable, and de demonstrable, Chaz. then we can uh, alleviate that level of doubt. Which is why when you asked me if I am a male, I said yes. And you said, how could I know that? And I said, because... Uh, the criterion, the measurement by which we use to determine male and female can be applied and the observation made that I am male. I have male genitalia. I have <laughs> uh, male gender traits. But you don't know if I exist or not. You could. I could be hallucinating you right now. Could you be How would I know could, the difference between that hallucination you, and what's real? Chaz, could you be... That's the question I'm putting towards you. Chaz, could you be hallucinating that you're a you're man? Pardon? I could indeed. Okay, then Both. you then you don't know that you're a man. But you can apply the measure. Hey, do you want to be in my worldview where you I can know you things? What, I you... can I can I can take my ghoulies out and we can all have a look at my male genitalia, but I don't All right. The the question is I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of him because he's he's he does he wanna be in my worldview or does he wanna be in his? Okay, if we're going to jump into his worldview where you can't know anything, then I'm going to call him out on his manhood and in whether we're actually having a conversation. Nobody wants to go there because that just shows the complete and utter foolishness of the atheist's position. If you want to know things to be true, which is where we started with this hangout, then you can, you can jump into the Christian worldview with a creator God who created us with the ability to know some things with absolute certainty, to know that there is a God who created us, and to know, this is, this is why this is important, to know that we are sinners, to know that we do things that are wrong and we are guilty. We all know that. And if you want to reject that, you want to reject that there's a God that exists? You have to reject everything. You have to reject everything. And this is the beauty of the Christian worldview. There's, there's 
you're either an ultimate skeptic to reject that God exists. You have to become the ultimate skeptic and say that you don't even know if you exist. You don't even know if you're what gender you are. Or you have to admit that there are absolutes and that God exists. And that establishes that God exists. You do a study of religions. You do a study of the, the claims of those who those who say that they worship a God, you will find Christianity be, to be true. Let me add some people. Matt Slick, you got anything to add to that? Well, when he said that uh, you can't know anything for sure, how do you know you can't know anything for sure? He's contradicting himself. What this tells us is that he's not a, a good critical thinker. And, you know, He's just yanking our chain in a lot of ways. He doesn't understand. Just like the Red <laughs> failed miserably to be able to argue logically and consistently, uh, so too with this guy. But it makes me wonder if uh, some of these arguments are a little too sophisticated for some people. Uh, some people I understand uh, can have trouble getting new concepts. That's fine. But I'm, I'm actually kind of curious to get a bunch of atheists in here. And let me just ask them some questions, exploratory questions. You know, I, if you want, I mean, if they're interested, you know, what would it take? I would like to take notes while I'm doing this. It's, uh, you know, if, if you guys are interested, I could doing that. Or I have um, survey questions uh, for atheists, and we've got over 100, almost 130, I think, respondents that are now categorized and uh, by the program I have and percentages of answers. We can go over some of those if you want. Up to you guys. Well, I know I, I can only track you for so long. <laughs> I can only track well, you for so long. I was tracking you, know, you with a red, red line, but then when you got into the logical or temporal, um, it was quite confusing for me. So I, I'm relatively certain that it was it was confusing for him as well. Yeah, he's, and he's not a dumb guy, but he hasn't studied that concept, and I don't think he wanted to humble himself and say, "No, explain that to me." No, that's all he had to do. Yeah, he, that's all he had to do is uh, just say, look, I don't understand what that is, and we'll talk about it because there are ramifications. I was going through this very slowly and uh, just point by point. It's not difficult. I mean, I could do that with you, Tim, because you're not an antagonist. I could run this by you logically. You go, yeah, that's right. Yes, that's right. Oh, I see your point. And then we could discuss the point. But, um, you know, a lot of times these atheists, I'm, I'm beginning to reassess uh, the spectrum of atheists in, in, um, in that these arguments, some of them are more sophisticated than others, but they're not difficult. And maybe the, the atheists, you know, I've encountered so, so many, they just don't get it. They don't understand what they're arguing against. Um, and you'd think that that would, they would at least, if they're going to argue against it, say, you know, I'm going to study this argument and see what you have to say. And that's what I do with, with people. I'll say, look, I don't understand your argument. Lay it out for me. Let me see what it is. Let me see. Yes, I know, Calvinist Klein. Uh, let me see what your argument is so that I can deal with it, like the cascade argument of my opponent I'm going to be debating in a couple of weeks uh, against the charismatic gifts. Try to understand his argument. I have to be able to. Well, I don't find atheists wanting to do the, that. I find atheists coming to the table with uh, what they think is a sufficient amount of information to deal with some of the arguments that I might raise. And they, they, they don't realize it. Uh, Red is a good example of that. Red's a real good example of not knowing what he was doing. Uh, he didn't realize that he didn't know enough. And uh, I'm trying to help him and, and trying to show. It's not, you know, it's not an insult. It's just... You don't know. Let me explain. You know, there's an atheist I know on Pal Talk, uh, Questor, and he explains things about physics to me. And he'll say, "Matt, what you just said isn't exactly accurate about something." I'll go, "Okay, tell me what is. What is tell me better. Tell me what am I missing?" I'm not offended by that, but it seems to me that a lot of atheists are offended by the idea of uh, being shown to be ignorant about something, to not know what the right answer is. So uh, maybe there's, I don't know, it's, uh, just something to reassess. These, it, it, these things are not difficult. These are not difficult concepts. I, well, they they might, but they might not be for you. 
but sometimes, hey, it does get a little deep. And I think that it's hard for them, like I said before, it's hard for them to humble themselves and say, hey, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Let me introduce the last guest to the broadcast. And like I said before, I'm going to upload this audio as the second half of the Google Hangout uh, so that everybody can hear this. But uh, let me introduce the person who's been waiting over an hour, and that is Butch. Butch is a an agnostic. That's the way he described himself in the chat when I asked him if he was an atheist. Butch, are you there? If you're there, um, you can engage. Maybe we want to move on. Uh, you can a- engage in a different different way, or you want to you want to piggyback on what's been said thus far, uh, Butch. But uh, welcome to the broadcast, Butch. You're on, bro, sir. Butch, three, two, one. We're gonna make room. I'm gonna get you out of here. He's been his mic is a problem. All right, so I won't boot you. Um, his mic is not working, which is frustrating. He says, right? "Hold on." Yeah. Okay. Um, I gotta step out. Vincent, you've been here quite a while. You, you want to chime in on what's been what uh, you've heard thus far? Um, not not off the atheism because. <laughs> I, well, I guess the question I was asked, and I guess I see why y'all do it, but I'm wondering why do y'all pre, you know, I guess it's in order to engage is to start with their presupposition of things like the Big Bang and all. I mean, what, what's the, what's the reasoning behind that? By just letting them assume that their their presuppositions the are correct. What was the question? I'm sorry. Well, a lot of them start with they they assume things like the Big Bang and all. So, you know, I mean, you're interacting I'm, with. I have no no problem with the Big Bang at all. The Big Bang says that the universe started at one point. Well, yeah, they, I they, agree. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, you do you agree? Millions of years. No, no. <laughs> Big Bang just says the universe started out of I, basically I, out of nothing. I that, believe that's, most of them, you know, assume the millions of years, billions of uh, years that in, involved in it. Well, I mean, it may or may not be the case of billions of years because of time differential and law and re- relativity. There's some physics going on within Christians who are doing research and thought like this. That uh, yeah. depending on the perspective, it could be six days, literally six days, 24-hour periods on Earth, and also billions of years outside of it. Some sophisticated arguments, but you know, I don't have a problem with yeah. with that in the, in light of that. But the Big Bang just means. For what I understand, it just means that the universe came into existence suddenly out of a big bang. When, how long ago, that's a separate issue to me. I agree. I just believe that, you know, a lot of the atheists already automatically assume things like because the big bang, they assume the different evolutionary time scales. And my, my question is, why do you, and I, why do you use start with their presupposition to argue from them. I, I, I assume that's there for a purpose, really. Well, they presuppose God's existence. They don't realize that. Yeah. I mean, they presuppose the laws of logic. Well, they can't account for them in their atheistic worldview. And so they don't realize that I'm just assume, uh, working with the godly assumptions that they are also taking, but they don't realize it. That's all. Okay, let's see if... Uh that's okay. really it. Thanks. Okay, let's see if Butch has his uh, mic issues worked out. I believe, Butch, you can unmute yourself. There you go. Welcome, Butch. Earth to Butch. Butch, are you there? At this point, I don't even know if he exists. <laughs> You are unmuted, Butch. It's just a matter of whether your equipment is uh, working. Maybe he lacks belief in a sound card. Well, if you can get that TD Jakes hopeful, 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 hopeful thinking going on, maybe he could just wish it into existence. Um. 
I I would like to get one more non-believer uh, interaction before we end this. It, are there any other uh, professing atheists in in here? Speak up now. <sighs> Anybody at all? Speak now or... We got a couple people without icons. Hey. Did you hear D.D. Jakes is starting to say homosexuality or homosexual marriage and orientation are basically kind of okay. He's he's him and hawing on that. I hadn't I hadn't yeah. heard that. I've yeah. seen it. And, and Michael Brown is kind of trying to get clarification on that from you. <laughs> Wait a minute. You say Michael Brown is uh, now... No. What? Yeah, well, you know, Michael Brown was on his show. Michael. Guess, oh, Michael I, Brown's trying to get clarification from T.D. Jakes. Okay. Uh, yeah, on, on, homose on his position of homosexuality. Okay, because Michael Brown's kind of pretty solid on the position. Yeah, he's pretty solid, but he, you know, <laughs> he did go on Jake's show, so. Yeah, yeah I was going to be on Jake's show and ask him some questions. I want to fly me out there and I'll say, Jake, let's sit down, buddy. We need to have a discussion. Okay, unedited, public discussion on where you stand biblically. Hey, what do you think, TJ? You want to do something like that? Yeah. Not going to happen. That's not going to happen. No. Hey, Joel Osteen, you want to do that? Hey, Joyce Meyer, you want to do that? Hey, Kenneth Copeland, you want to do that? Well, they've got their handlers that are going to keep you from even you got that. getting that proposition you got that out right. there to them. Yep, you got that, that right. All right. That, that would interfere between between them and their God, you know, money. Hmm. <laughs> All right, for the sake of uh, editing purposes, I'm going to uh, go ahead and kind of wrap this up. We actually, for those of you who are in Mixler, we've got 47 listeners right now. I'm going to open it up. I'm sure uh, there, are, there are people who would like to join. Um, if you're not going to engage, I'm going to, I'm going to open everybody's mic up and give controls to a few people. But if you're not going to engage, really, you should drop out and just listen on Mixler um, because uh, we'd like to, you know, people who, who want to engage with Matt Slick to, to be able to do that. But for those of you who are listening on, on YouTube, and those of you listening on the Bible Thumping Wingnut podcast, want to encourage you as we wrap this broadcast up to uh, go to CARM.org, uh, help Matt Slick out, support his ministry. He's been coming here on the Bible Thumping Wingnut.com YouTube channel for over a year, just volunteering his time. The man loves to engage, he's got a passion for um, engaging believers and non believers. And, and proclaiming biblical truth. Uh, so, hey, if you appreciate his ministry, I, I know I do, go go to karm.org, consider uh, helping him out financially. This is all he does for for money. I mean, I've I'm a, got other forms of income, so I don't, I don't need to um, depend on Bible Thumping Wingnut supporters. I've got other income. So think about supporting Matt. And uh, Matt, thanks for thanks for coming on faithfully. Thank no you for problem. your ministry. And uh, uh, also, if you want to know more about uh, Andrew Rappaport and Striving for Eternity, go check him out. Do you know what's interesting is that Bible Thumping Wingnut is actually a ministry of Striving for Eternity. Did you know that, Matt Slick? Is an extension of Striving for Eternity? It actually is. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't he, know that. He actually Good. just, he actually, his, Striving for Eternity just took over Bible Thump and Wingnut and just like gobbled us up. We, oh, we're, good. We're no longer autonomous. We're part of part of Striving for Eternity, which is very interesting. Even Borgized. Yes. Yes. All that means is that donations given to us are tax deductible through Striving for Eternity. And all our funds are th funneled through him. He's actually helping us out because we're getting started and we're not. 5013C yet, so. Yeah. Yeah, I have a, somebody I do that with, too. They kind of use CARMS 501C3, which is fine. So, 
Thank you for listening to this episode of the Bible Thumping We Met podcast. Until uh, next time, uh, whether you're a believer or a non-believer, my prayer is that God would bless you, uh, that, uh, that he would either convict you of your sin and bring you to repentance, or he would uh, bless you in your walk in, in your sanctification as a Christian. Until next time, take care and God bless.